ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Well, hello there and welcome back to yet another FileMaker tutorial video where we are going to learn more about FileMaker Pro. My name is Matt Petrosky, bringing you these tutorials from my website, FileMakerMagazine.com. In this short little video, we're going to be taking a look at the new grouping functionality in FileMaker 22. Let's head to my desktop and take a look at the file. All right, thanks for joining me here. You can see I've got two different files here, and the cool thing is you're able to switch between uh, 20 and 21. You can see that the menu that's going to show up here, it will not change even though I switch between these two, but I am in fact moving between FileMaker 21 and 22. We can see right here what I've done in layout mode. If you ever need to do this, you're testing two different versions. This is just a nice little tip. You can put this value in here, the application version. If you don't know how to merge that, you can always go up to the insert menu and then come down to this option right here, other symbol. What that's going to do is give you access to all of FileMaker's environment variables. You're able to put those on the layout without actually having to create a calculation. And therefore, you now know that I'm working in FileMaker 21 here. And when I switch to this window, I'm working in FileMaker 22. <clears throat> all right, the grouping feature. The number one reason you want to know about this, and uh, in my opinion, is probably within, I forget how many total features they released. I'll point to an article by uh, a very well-respected developer, Fabrice Nordman, also where I host my databases. If you need that, that's at fmcloud.fm. Um, we are going to take a look at this grouping functionality. And the primary reason that you want to know about it is this. Now, I personally used to avoid grouping a lot of things in my layout, but that came with a little bit of a consequence. And the consequence is this. If on this particular object in layout mode, I was to apply something like, as I hit Command-4 right there to switch to the database area, and we look at this behavior and the all-important hide object win. This is used so much in a lot of your really complex uh, interfaces. Well, if I have, and I'm just using this very simple example right now, I'm going to put a value of one, and then I'm also going to put a value of one right here. Now this is highly simplified in terms of uh, your solution and what could be the complexity. The complexity of your hide calculation could be very complex, going through uh, relationships, doing all kinds of things. In fact, I always suggest a nice audit of how many different elements on your layout has calculations applied to it. And not just hide calculations, but uh, conditional calculations. In this case, the conditional formatting isn't going to come up for this box, but here is the point. The point is, by not taking advantage of grouping, I have my calculation duplicated once and twice, and it might be three, four, five, six, you get the idea. With grouping on, I get to avoid that, and I get to reduce the total number of calculations in the whole of my FileMaker layout. This makes things faster because it's fewer things for the calculation engine to evaluate. So when it came to grouping, the biggest problem was when you made that decision, you would take the calculation, you would cut it from one, you would cut it from the other. You would then group both of these with your option to group, which I'm going to choose the arrange right here, and then we have this group option. I also know it by heart as a command or control R, which will group those. We can see that. I'll quickly undo it right here because the inspector is going to become the um, object inspector is going to be going to become very important to us. When we group that, we can see that it creates a group. Now this wrapper gets its own attributes. In other words, the hide object win, if I was, and it's still on the clipboard, to paste that complex calculation, it's just a one in this case, we get the I and it shows up for the whole of the group. Now the biggest downfall of this was this right here. Whenever we wanted to get a new item in, this item included into this, we had to, in FileMaker 21, ungroup. Meaning I have to ungroup and when I do that, what I get is this dialog right here. It's telling us that there are things that are set to this group as a whole, attributes which uh, there are others that can be applied as well. If we look at this, um, the tooltip does not apply. 
Um, are there anything else other than hide? I think there was a few. I'm missing in them. Pre the predominant one is the hide calculation. Um, but if there are others, the benefit group, etc. So we want to avoid that. We are going to do that in FileMaker 22 now with a wonderful new feature, and we're going to explore it fully. All right, so let's do it. In fact, we can copy between FileMaker 21 and 22, or if you just open your solution in 22 that was created in an earlier version. I just copied those to the clipboard. I switch over to 22, go into layout mode, and click paste. All of a sudden in here, other than the new UI that you see, all of this is going to be new in 22, at least on the Mac. It's uh, much more of a very Mac-looking feel that we have right here. We are going to see in the arrange, or actually in the group area, that we have these two new buttons. Now there are three ways that we are going to be able to group and ungroup these, and I want to make sure that you know all of them, depending on how you like to work. So the, uh, the three ways are this. Number one, we can work with things using the objects panel, which that's a nice little bold that we get now. Instead, it used to be uh, plain. We also get the icons, which we just took a look at. And the third and final way that we have is when something is selected, we get the arrange menu and we get the ungroup group. These two existed before, but now we have the add and the remove group. So all we're going to have to do is simply select the item and then add that in. And the wonderful thing is that this hide calculation is not impacted. So when we scroll uh, to this, uh, let's see, that should have the hide object win. That is an inter There it is right there. I don't know why that didn't show up uh, initially with that selected. Maybe it was because I had something selected inside. That was probably the case right there. All right, so with this group selected, we are able to include this now by simply just marking and selecting all of them FileMaker shows us multiple values, but if we choose one of the three options, in this case, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose add to group right there. I add that in, the hide object stays there. Absolutely wonderful now. So this is what you're doing for FileMaker 22. You are going to, when you switch to FileMaker 22 and all of your clients, you are going to do some layout optimization. Go through and try to reduce the total number of hide calculations and things that are going on by being able to take advantage of this because it now becomes even easier in your layouts to manage this whole object. Let's take that hide off. In particular, it becomes the advantage of when you are going to use this little visibility icon, I don't have to use the visibility on each one of these, although I can. Clicking this icon will reveal them, but by selecting the group itself alone, all of it is hidden, which is really, really wonderful. So now you can treat a group truly as something that has its own attributes outside of the individual elements that it contains. So let's also take a look at the two other ways, just in case it wasn't obvious. You can simply just drag within this object inspector. If I select any one of these, we can see that they rotate through becoming highlighted. If I want the yellow one to be out, I am able to drag that out and it is now no longer part. One of the interesting things that we note if we select this blue one and we now overlap this, if you do have overlapping um, elements, what happens is regardless, and we're looking at this one, which is this selected rectangle right here, regardless of whether this is in the front or in the back. Now I have a shortcut key that I am using that's moving this from the front to the back. If you're not familiar with that and we go back to that inspector, what we're going to see under the arrange is that we have the move to front, the send to back, and then we have bring forward and send backwards. Now I love assigning keys to those, which I have right here, distribute, resize, where is it, align, um, which one is it? It's somewhere in here that I have shortcut, you, well you can see that I have shortcut keys assigned right here. I do this in the operating system using the keyboard settings panel, but I do have them in order to move them. But regardless of whether it is in front or in back, so if we place this above those objects, 
And we can see that if I send it to the back, it will go to the back. If I bring it to the front, it will be in front. Now, if I select all of those, or if I, uh, I'm rather than drag using the ability to drag this into this group, I tend to prefer being able to marquee and then choosing that arrange and then add to group. One of the things you'll notice is that regardless of whether it's in front or behind, when you add to the group, it will always go to the back of the group or the bottom of the group. So in other words, it ended up right here as being the last one. So we can see that when it's selected. So we can um, ungroup that again. Uh, let's go ahead and use this version and drag it out. So again, I don't know if I uh, did that at the beginning or at the end, but if we put it here at the bottom, and again, if we marquee that and it's underneath and we group it, then it is going to, uh, in that group, you can see, I uh, know that created a new group. That was not what I wanted to do. Uh, that is something to be aware of. Uh, you want to specifically choose add to group, not the group, because FileMaker did create a new group there. So if I ungroup that, and with that selected, I simply select all of that and choose the arrange and the add to group, you can see that it just goes into the back. So I, f I didn't notice whether it was up at the top or whether it was at the bottom, but the point being, it goes to the back of the group, but that's no big deal. You just select that, and again, you can then move it within the group to the front or the back as desired. So there's only uh, the one other thing that you might want to know about, and that is the third option, and I don't use that, and that is simply uh, going to the group option here, where you're able to uh, select any given object, of course, by direct selecting. I can mouse over and choose these two buttons, but that for me is way less efficient than actually using the uh, object inspector that we have over here, which is ten tends to be, I, I go between the two, the object inspector and the right clicking of all of these different uh, options that you have when you choose them with the arrange. And that's what we have for the ungroup. Super powerful in FileMaker 22. Highly suggested if you are doing a lot of layout work, uh, you optimize your layouts in order to take advantage of this. Uh, stick around. If you'd like another one, a video will be coming up here for another tip about FileMaker 22. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.